Hello, today we are going to have a look at the concept of cut sets. A cut set is basically a subgraph of G and it comprises of set of edges. Uh, if these edges are to be removed from the graph, it will become disconnected. So as an example, uh, in the case of this uh, K3 graph, we can identify three cut sets. So the first one being AB. If you were to remove these from the graph, we will have the first component comprising of the vertex 1 and 3 and the second component will comprise of vertex 2. If we take the case of BC, the BC will result in a similar behavior and similarly could be the concept applied to CA. So this is the basically uh, the uh, concept of division of a graph into multiple components. But there is a catch. So, for example, if we take uh, a slightly more complex example, uh, perhaps this graph, so we can maybe identify a lot of uh, cut sets among here. Uh, we could take the case of uh, uh, the cut set uh, comprising of K. If, uh, and, and, and you can note that this is the minimum uh, size of the cut set and this could represent a kind of a behavior of uh, the weakness of a graph okay so so we could also identify some more cut sets we could take the case of ACH that will also result in breaking down uh, into two components we can take DFH we can take ABG we can take GEF and so on and so forth so one one particular cut set which uh, I want to uh, uh, discuss over here is the case of uh, uh, ACD so if you were to remove this cut set okay we can somehow identify it, this cut set it will result in the graph being disconnected because basically these are going to be removed and there you go you have two components but we will not be considering this as a valid cut set the reason is because inside um, let, let's give it a number inside C1 we can identify the uh, a C H edges we can place that into A C H so we, we really have to consider that if we treat this as C1 and this as C2 then C2 which is a subset of uh, C1 if this condition is there then for us C1 is uh, not a valid cut set some interesting questions can be asked. Uh, so, for example, uh, we can understand that, okay, a uh, cut set basically divides a graph into multiple components, but how many cut sets are there? This is just like asking how many spanning trees are there. And if we have the concept of a minimum spanning tree, then perhaps we can also have the concept of a minimum cut set. There are, you can see some, some similarities between both the concepts of spanning trees and cut sets. So we are going to see that in the next theorems. So the first theorem which we are going to consider, uh, it says that if you are sub if you are to identify a cut set in a in a graph G, then it must contain at least one branch of every spanning tree of G. So while it's a difficult uh, problem to enumerate uh, every possible spanning tree of a graph because uh, it's uh, going to be uh, quite a lot. Uh, we have covered this before so but if we just take the case of a graph we can maybe perhaps identify that three spanning trees of this graph are basically illustrated over here okay and if we suppose that the cut set which we have identified is um, ACH well if we have a look we can find that there are the members of the cut set a, C, H. Well, we, we can find them in these spanning trees. So A is here. In this case, we can see that C is present. Well, in this case, we can see that all three are present. So basically, if we enumerate any spanning tree from this graph, and if we enumerate any cut set from this graph, there will be some uh, shared branches. At least one shared branch is going to be there. So we can we can take the case of A B E F and 
if you look at the cuts at a b e f well we can see uh, the presence of a and e okay so a and e are here we can see the presence of uh, e we can see okay b is also here okay and we can take the case of a and uh, that's it okay so so we, in in all of these cases we can see that the property still holds now the next theorem basically says that if we have a circuit identified in a graph uh, the there will be even number of edges uh, between the edges of the circuit and the edges of the cut set so the total number of edges is always going to be even so we can uh, have a consideration for this graph uh, comprises of the set a b c d e and if we are to identify the list of uh, circuits these are listed over here so the first case is the uh, triangle abc then we have ade and followed by this butterfly shape dbce so if we are going to comply with the theorem if we take the case of perhaps ed we can we can see that okay in all of these circuits we can see uh, we can see ed so to the the quantity is 2 this is actually 0 okay so there are no shared edges and 0 is also even number okay we can take the case of e d over here so again it, 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 2 is uh, being reflected over here we can take another case of uh, perhaps the cut set um, a d b okay so in a d b let's look at each of the uh, circuits again so in the first case we have uh, AB which is which is shared then in the second case we have AD and in this case we have DB so in these cases the uh, number of uh, edges between this cut set and the number of edges between uh, the circuit C1 C2 C3 it's always an even quantity but why is this an even quantity so we can describe the y here well the basic idea is that if if we consider a cut set so what the cut set is doing is that it is dividing a graph into two components and we can say that the components belonging to uh, since it is two components we can say that the vertices belonging to the first component we can call them as v1 and we can take the case of the second component well in that case we have the set of vertices as v2 now what happens is that this cut set since it was removed uh, what three possibilities can arise so if there is a circuit present in the graph it's possible that the circuit belongs entirely to the space v1 so maybe we can have this case as a uh, as a circuit the second possibility could be that the circuit belongs entirely to v2 so maybe this is the case but if we have a case where the circuit originally belongs to both v1 and v2 so that would imply that we have a kind of a co-cycle in which uh, we start in uh, v1 then we move to v2 and then from v2 we have to come back again remember it is a circuit so basically if we if we take this case so there must be some back and forth movement okay so this can be done in either direction so this basically gives us the sense that uh, if the if if the first case is true then in that case there are zero shared edges between the circuit and the uh, cut set it, it, the same case applies over here there are zero shared edges but in this case uh, in the third case actually if we have the uh, edges in the cut set identified as s and we have the uh, you can say the uh, edges belonging to the circuit as c and the intersection of these so the the total quantity of that is going to be n okay so the number of shared edges between both of them and if we are going to take n modulus 2 well in that case we should have 0 so that that is the general idea of why this theorem works and now if we uh, 
uh, fit the uh, last case so if we if we consider that the um, if we consider that the cut set identified is ADB so we can see here that DB are actually you can say they are both of the edges are incident to one another so they have a shared vertex so definitely if DB is a cut set that would imply that this is that shared vertex between them so we have basically uh, D we have B and the rest uh, are basically the connectivities between uh, the uh, two more vertices so we can see from D to B from B to C and from C to E so this is the representation of the last case where we we also have a case of a over here but it's it's not used okay so uh, so db and the circuit dbce they they have two uh, edges in common now moving ahead we come to the concept of uh, fundamental cut set uh, so a fundamental cut set is basically a cut set that contains one and only one branch of a spanning tree so we we did this discussion okay uh, pre, uh, in, in in the previous slides where we mentioned that every cut set of a connected graph g must contain at least one branch of uh, every spanning tree of g so so this is basically another link between spanning trees and the concept of a cut set so maybe we can take the case of a uh, uh, one of these spanning trees let's let's pick up uh, let's pick up this over there and we can get rid of the other ones oops sorry deleted a vertex and if you are to identify the uh, cut set so let's let's quickly go through it so one possibility is k so let's look at the easier ones first we can have the case of a c and h we can have C3 is equal to D, F and H, D, F and H. We can take C4 as G, E and F and we can have take case of C5 as uh, A, B and G. And we can take the case of C6. Uh, so this is this uh, line A, B, E, F, A, B, E, F. We can take the case of C7 as A, C, D, F. We can take C8 as G, B, C, H. And lastly, we can take the case of C9 as G, E, D, H. Now, remember that we have chosen this as a spanning tree. And if we look at the shared edges, so okay, so K is just one shared edge over here. We can take the case of ACH so uh, again we only have one uh, common uh, edge between the cut set and the branch and taking the case of DFH so DFH we just have D taking the case of GEF okay so here we have two branches okay uh, if we go to A B and G we have two branches if we take the case of A B E F so we have A and E likewise we can take the case of uh, A and D in C8 we have okay so we in C8 we have G B C so we just have G uh, used over here and okay in this last one we have G E D so we have three branches present over here so basically this gives us all of these are cut sets but which one of these are fundamental cuts so these are crossed out why because they have two branches and these ones are our fundamental okay this is also crossed out so we have uh, one 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 and one these are our fundamental cut sets now the next theorem basically says that the ring sum of any two cut sets in a graph is either a third cut set or an edge disjoint union of cut sets so both these possibilities are possible so what happens is that if we if we uh, perform a ring sum operation of two cut sets so maybe we can take the case of <coughs> this graph oops sorry we can take the graph why isn't it selected okay here you go we can identify some cut sets already 
from this graph so maybe we can take the case of uh, C4 and uh, C8 so it doesn't have to be fundamental cut sets so C4 and C8 so C4 ring sum C8 so recalling the concept of the uh, of the ring sum we perform a union of the edges in such a way that if there is an edge belonging to both of the set members we are not going to include it so in this case we can exclude G because it is found in both of the cases and we are left with uh, we are left with E F and B C H so graphically this can be uh, illustrated as E F we have B C and lastly as H now the impact of this on the graph is that if these H sets are removed we are going to be left with the removal of B the removal of E C H and F okay so as a result we can see that this 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 has resulted in the graph breaking into um, two components which, which which fulfills the criteria of the of the uh, cut sets so conventionally we say that um, uh, the, the the cut set divides the graph into two components so if we keep on doing this if we keep on taking any uh, cut set i and performs uh, uh, ring sum with another cut set j well it's possible that we may come up with new cut sets which result in the graph breaking out into more than two components so like we can have uh, these com these much components possible okay so at least two but it can be more than two also so why is this uh, the reason is okay we can we can have a, a quick explanation for this let me move this aside okay so basically um, when we say that we are going to uh, divide uh, what it is on the basis of CI that means that we are distributing the vertices amongst V1 and V2 so this is the scenario okay when we take the case of uh, uh, CJ well in that case we can take that the vertices are distributed amongst V3 and V4 and this is because of CJ and in both of the cases if we take the case of V1 uh, intersection V2 we are going to get null likewise if we take the case of V3 intersection V4 we are going to have null but on the other hand if we take the case of v1 union v2 we have all the pair of vertices and if we take the case of v3 union v4 we also have all the pair of vertices so from this we can basically deduce since we have a shared view we can combine uh, this term and this term over here and get v1 union v2 is equal to uh, v3 union v4 and now we can consider the uh, okay let's let's call it a name of ck obtained as a result of uh, doing a ring sum with cj so we we get with a similar behavior we have v5 obtained as a result of this ck v6 and now by, by inspecting the uh, expressions which we have obtained earlier on we can we can uh, derive some formalism by linking the uh, sets v1 v2 v3 and v4 with v5 and v6 so first of all we can basically identify that v1 and v2 have no vertices in common so from this we imply that due to the mixing which which occurs later on we can deduce from this that 
v1 has some shared vertices v3 and it has some shared vertices v with v4 so basically we can write that as v1 intersection v3 and we have v1 intersection v4 in a similar manner uh, taking the case of the v2 v2 and v1 do not have any shared vertices but v2 has some shared vertices with the v3 and v2 has some shared vertices with v4 so uh, the result of the intersection of all of these operations are going to give us some 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 uh, non empty set and as per the uh, division which has taken place over here so basically we can also take the case of v5 intersection v6 is equal to null so um, this basically implies that there is no vertices in common between v5 and v6 so some kind of mutual uh, exclusion uh, kind of effect needs to be considered well in that case the only um, uh, mutually exclusive sets are in the diagonal form over here so as a result we can consider that the this term can be fed over here so basically implying that the union between uh, v1 intersection v4 and v2 intersection v3 can constitute the uh, composition of v5 vertices and vice versa we can say that the uh, v1 intersection v3 union the uh, intersecting set v2 v4 that can be plugged into v6 and this basically uh, this operation union operation basically shows to us the ring sum operation between the sets of v1 and v3 and this basically gives us the ring sum operation between the sets of vertices uh, set v2 and v4 and this basically shows the behavior which is uh, carried out in this uh, ring sum operation so in the end we come to the uh, last theorem which basically gives an association between fundamental circuit identified by a symbol alpha and a fundamental cut set identified by a symbol beta so you may recall that for a given spanning tree of a graph g we had identified these fundamental cut sets uh, f amongst the graph and uh, we can identify the uh, set of edges k a g e d as the branches of the spanning tree and we can associate the set of edges b c h and f as the chords of this spanning tree so we can identify some uh, fundamental circuits so let's uh, take the case of uh, uh, e d and f so we have to identify the um, associated uh, you can say cut sets with these branches uh, okay of alpha so the associated cut sets we can we can look at all of the cases where uh, edf can be having some overlapping behavior so so we may be able to see that okay e f g could have an overlapping behavior we could take the case of f d h we could take the case of g e d h we can also take the case of a b e f and we can take the case of a c d f they all have some overlapping behavior associated with the branches of alpha so all these uh, fundamental cut sets are basically our betas and we can identify a chord from amongst this uh, circuit so so we can see that this is basically reflecting f f in the circuit alpha 1 is basically a member of uh, the uh, set of chords and we can then perhaps see in the association of all of the cut sets associated with these so if we identify the possible cut sets so ck is not uh, k is not a valid cut set associated with these uh, edges 
we can take the case of ACH. This is not also a valid cut set with respect to this circuit. We can take the case of DFH. Yes, this is a valid cut set. And the last one is GBCH. This is not a valid cut set with respect to the circuits uh, alpha one. So the theorem basically says uh, that the chord which has been identified in the uh, fundamental circuit, that same chord is also going to be found in a valid cut set associated with the branches of alpha. In, it will not be found in other uh, uh, cut sets. So with, um, with this we can end today's class uh, and uh, see you in the next lecture.